What's going on guys? I'm that kangaroo and we're about to play some Dark Souls 2. I am fucking excited. Perhaps you've seen it. I'm gonna skip this Maybe unfortunately. A... Wanna watch the video? Good video. Buy the game. Buy the game. It's a great game. I'll watch all the other videos, but that video is long and most people have already seen it. Now, I love the starting area. I love how they do this. I love how they just start you off into the game and you don't have a class. You don't have any items. Your health is halved. And you're just like, what the hell, FromSoft? What's going on? But you soon realize that that's going to change. Such a beautiful environment. Uh, the goal of this playthrough is to have fun, but also show off everything that I feel some people miss in their playthroughs. Like, all the item descriptions, what the weapon movesets look like, what the weapons do, uh, what the armor looks like, all the different armors I can find, armor sets, and what their poise break is. And... Alright, so, let's, let's get started, though. Gigantic stalactites. Really cool. And there's really nothing to find in this first room, but... It is kind of cool to walk over to the ledge and look into the bottomless abyss. For some reason, there is no bottom. As this is Dark Souls, that's why. Alright, but again, yeah, there's nothing to find in this room. I mean, I recommend exploring anyways to get you in a habit of exploring. And just because it's so damn pretty, especially on PC. Uh, so these guys, you can lock onto them. Don't attack them, at least not yet. If you really want to come back and be a bitch and kill them, you can, but right now, you don't have any weapons. And if you hit one of them, they will all attack you. They'll all gang up on you, and you'll probably die. You don't want your first death to be that stupid. Also, hello. Hi, guys. Showing off some of these gestures here. Fabulous gestures. <laughs> One of my favorite starting ones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> let's let's move on. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm so sexy right now. Come on up here to the right. Grab this rusted coin. The first item you're gonna find in the game if you actually look around. Now it's kind of useful. I don't really use it, but if you're going to farm for something or just want an item in particular, this will raise your ch uh, drop chances. Uh, I think it's by 10%, but I'm not sure, so don't quote me on it. And it's only temporary, too. Uh, old rusted coin. Crushing the coin temporarily boosts luck. Temporarily boosts luck. This rusted coin gives you that, ex that little extra bit of luck, making items and the like easier to find. The coin is engraved with the image of a god that was worshipped in ancient times. One knows it's... That's also kind of interesting. The coin comes from, most likely, a <clears throat> civilization that existed before Drang Lake. Which, we're in Drang Lake. You'll find out soon enough. Get to our first little town. Alright, so coming up here. Could easily miss this. There is a little path over here, hidden behind the bushes. Uh, you don't really need to come here right now, but I'll show you why. Uh, this is your first sign that you probably shouldn't be here, just... Gigantic footsteps leading up around the corner. I wonder what they lead to. Hmm. Certainly not that fat guy. Uh, he... Actually pretty important. Right now, you cannot kill him. You can kill him, but I don't recommend trying. You don't have any weapons yet. We'll come back very soon. In fact, as soon as I get my armor and stuff, you get what he drops. Because what he drops is easily the best starting thing in the game. Because you can get it so early, and it's a ring, and it's a damn good ring, in my opinion. Other than that, don't bother. Uh, you can get kind of close to him. He's guarding an item. The item is not worth dying over. I repeat, it's not worth dying over. Come back and get it later. It's not even that good of an item, but it'll help. We'll leave him alone for now. We'll come back. Ooh. Ooh. 
maybe I'll get my old whip again. All right, so you can see that item from the bridge here. It's kind of right there. You can roll off. Actually, can you? I don't know. I wouldn't try. I, I don't anymore. I think I did my first time through, but I don't really try anymore, so... It doesn't look like you can, actually. Probably get stuck on that. Small, smooth, and silky stone. It's not really that useful of an item. It's... Basically a healing item. Oh, okay. Two hit. Uh, you use it like this, and it uses or slightly restores your HP, which there's other items that you get as soon as I go into the house that do the same thing, if not better. Uh, these are best saved to be traded with certain crows, which we will also encounter very soon. A smooth and silky stone used to slightly restore HP. The shrine of this stone is no ordinary polish and can only be achieved over a long period. Long period. Some in this land are in search of such stone. Another interesting thing. Uh, the dark sign is probably one of the most interesting items you have. You can't use it, you can't drop it, you can't do anything with it, but what it means is you're cursed. In a cursed mark, the dark sign induces death, with burning the players to the last bonfire rested at at the cost of all souls' health. This means that if you die, all the souls that you've collected while playing the game that are down here, which I have zero because I haven't killed anything yet, but all those souls will be left on a basically your soul and if you can make it back to that area where you died without dying again you can retrieve all those souls but if you die a second time without retrieving those souls they're all gone this makes that possible because you're basically cursed every time you die you're doomed to repeat yourself slightly more hollowed slightly less health at the last bonfire you rested at with nothing do what you must to gather the pieces, scraping them into some semblance of a hole before the will to do so fades. Uh, this is another useful item if you just, for some reason, get invaded a bunch. It doesn't, doesn't happen all that often. I imagine it will in the future when less people start playing. But this banishes, I'll read it, I guess, a symbol of farewells that has been passed down since, the, since time immemorable. The crystal sends phantoms back to their homes, or sends you back to yours. Whether ending in hope or despair, encounters are valuable experiences. Beware fickle use of this item. They basically are saying that at the end there, because it's 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 if you, this will send any phantom back to their home world. If you get invaded, the red phantom, which if you don't want to fight the guy, sure, send him back, whatever. He's a red phantom. He invaded the world. Fuck him. But if you summon someone to help, like summon for co-op and you want help for this area, don't send them back without letting them fulfill their duty. Because if they don't fulfill their duty, then they don't get anything. And that's not really cool, man. It's not cool. Let, let them fulfill their duty, then send them back. Vice versa, if someone summons you for a boss and you get up to the boss, don't use this and duck out of their world. Like, help them fight the boss. You don't lose anything if you're a phantom. The point is you can using this, though. Bone of Order, it's not really all that important. It's an online item. Uh, you will, online play item. You will be punished for fleeing from other worlds by disconnecting unjustly. However, this charm will disperse the ire directed at you. But sins are not easily buried. There's no telling if you will be let off so easily next time. Each encounter in life is a precious turn of fate, and fate will not be cheated. So don't disconnect from an online session. You feel like you're about to die or something's not going your way, fucking die! It's a game, dude. Let it happen. It's part of it. If you die, it's basically the, the circle of life in Dark Souls is death. And live it. <clears throat> die. Don't don't back out. Don't disconnect. You'll be punished for that. Oh my, you're face of the curse it's an undead that's what you call me an undead has come to play and i'm standing right here you know they all end up here all the ones like you so yeah basically you spoke to that kind old dear sounds like you? you're not the first one that's thrown yourself into a pit which you're finished. I'll explain once this 
You'll go hollow. Yes, you will become one of them. Hollows prey upon men. So yeah, I am Feast Halloween currently, but I'm not hollow. I still have my my mind. This I'm is my the sanity. Fate of the curse. Uh, hollowing <laughs> takes a while. It takes a, a, a lot of deaths. And I don't think you can ever do it in the lore of the game, but you can get down to half health and be really, really hideous. The point is, when they say that, that you could go hollow, I am hollowing. I'm not hollow yet. Hollow are the things that run around, or the enemies that you fight that are mindless and fighting for no cause, basically. Fighting for whatever cause they believe in with no mind. I don't fucking know. The point is, you're not hollow yet. Going through the hollowing process. Oh, it's sandwich. Oh, nope, nope, sandwich. Lord Sandwich. Hey. Lord Sandwich? Lord Sandwich. Yes. Game. Oh, at least you know your own name. Hmm. Do I, though? Here's that really my name before I came here? For sharing. Oh, I should have been the it's Earl of Sandwich. Effigy. It's a rubbish. Take a closer look. Tumble, have you? Who do you think it's supposed to be? Think yep. back. Deep Bundle of into sticks. Your past. Yes. It's an effigy of you. I don't think I look like a tumbleweed, but thank you. Alright. So these are the classes that you can choose from Warrior, the Knight. Swordsman, Bandit, Cleric, Sorcerer, Explorer, and Deprived. Deprived starts at level 1, so if you're going to do an SL1 in this game, you have to start as a Deprived. Which means you start with no items at all, basically. But it's not necessarily a bad way to go, because, I mean, hell, if you're going to do a mundane build, oh man. You might as well start with this and just do 20s across the board. You do have to be 180. No, no, what am I thinking? <laughs> That's if you're starting from... Well, the point is you'd have to be a high level to do that, but still. It'd be a really fun PvP build to try. Sure that. Um, Alright, so they're not really all that important, depending on what you start with. Honestly, the most important part about your starting class is more of the items you start with. It affects that. And if you want to play Strictly Sorcerer and you don't want to use like weapons from the start, like swords or daggers or anything, it's going to be really hard first off. But second off, you kind of have to start with a sorcerer because they start with soul arrows. And you can find soul arrows relatively early in the game, but not early enough to be a sorcerer from the start. That's for damn sure. Explorer starts with a bunch of other little items that, you know, they're, they're kind of useful. I mean, they are useful, but you can find them really early on again. You don't really need to start with all these it shouldn't make your starting decision that's for sure he also starts with a ring that no one else starts with but it's just a magic ring which gives you slightly more magic resistance i imagine early on it might help a little bit but the ring's not that good and you find it kind of early on in the game anyways but it's it's more about these it, it well i guess it is more about these this hat is pretty useful it gives you whoops Gives you a higher drop rate, uh, but if you can buy that from one of the first merchants, uh, it gives you a higher drop rate for items, which is kind of cool. These can be useful to start with, but again, you can change these at any time. None of these really matter. You, you could you could start as a sorcerer and end as a heavy two-handing like giant <laughs> club user. It doesn't it doesn't matter. I am going to start as the knight, because he starts with a broadsword, which I'll use for a little bit, and he starts with the falconer armor. He kind of just, it's more of he starts with the stats I want to start with, and I'm going to try to keep this character relatively low leveled. Not that there's that much of a reason to, but 
you know. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and start with him. Not going to mess around too much with the body or the face. Change the hair color to white. No, what did you what did you do there? Mm, oh, I didn't approve this. The only fucking thing. So good. Roller. We're gonna have to give him a beard because they added beards for God's sake. We're gonna make him an old man though. Tattoo, don't worry about that here. If you're gonna do tattoos, oh, I recommend going into advanced settings. Because the tattoos they give you are so stupid. But there's a trick, and the trick can make the tattoos really actually. Blood red, yeah. Capacity, you're gonna turn this up. I like to turn it up. Alright, now. Look how stupid these are. Wow, you... That's cool. That is cool. I want a Bronco on my... Go Denver Bronco. Woohoo! But, here's the cool part. Get myself a wicked Thunderbird. Firebird. Position that right over the nose okay up it up a little bit right there how awesome that is seriously this is where it starts to be um cool and not what they intended it to be did and awesome look how badass that's starting to look Look at that. That's perfect. In my war. Good enough. Yep. So yeah, mess around with the... Oh, I didn't do something very important. Starting gifts. Okay. Uh, the life ring you can kind of find early on in the game. It's not that useful. It really isn't. It you a teeny tiny bit of health that's not that noticeable human effigy you get very early in the game again don't worry about starting with that healing wares <clears throat> get early in the game again wouldn't worry about starting with these either really the only things you really want to look at are these three items this is fun but it's more pvp in fact i'm pretty sure it's only pvp when someone invades your world, you can use the Seed of the Tree of the Giants to make all the enemies in your world then attack that invader. Because normally, when somebody invades your world, enemies in your world don't affect them. They only attack you. They won't go after the invader because they, they maybe don't even see the invader. But Seed of the Tree of the Giants will turn all those enemies then on the invader. And that's kind of fun. But especially because a lot of times they don't expect it and it will help turn the t tides in a fight if someone invades you bonfire aesthetics very useful too but you can kind of get one relatively early in fact eh, kind of early yeah i mean you can definitely go really early to it if you want not recommended but these <clears throat> reset the bonfire so if you've well, I'll explain more when we actually go to one. It's kind of complicated. Uh, I always start with Petrified Something. Because the only purpose with this item is to trade to those crows I mentioned earlier. And those crows will give you any random tier of high... Like, any random high-tiered item. Mo I'm pretty sure it might just be weapons. Any random high-tiered weapon. Because I've only ever gotten a weapon from it. And I'm pretty sure you can only get like certain weapons from doing that random drop so it's fun to just see what you get early on all right let's get started i am ready all people come here for the same reason to break the curse you're no different i should think hmm doesn't stand a chance well, you never know. 
<laughs> and they're all gonna cackle like old hags. But you know, I mean, what else are you gonna do when you're old? Throw hair on your shoulders and sit around the fire. But remember, hold on to your souls. They're all that keep you from going hollow. Oh, I'll fool you no longer. Quite sure. You lose your souls. All of them. Over and over yeah. again. There you go. <laughs> She's basically telling you prepare to die a bunch. But she doesn't know who I am. She doesn't know me. We're going to go ahead and wrap up this little house area and then go to the little bonfire outside and we'll move on to the next video. The next video, I'll be able to show you one of the coolest early on items to get and a very easy way to get it. This is a limbo. A link between Drang Lake and the outer world. So yeah, that's... Fair traveler, I know that you must have a story. It's kind of cool. Any, everybody who falls Why into that. Oh, I didn't explain that. Explain that now. This lost, decayed kingdom. So in the, in the opening cinematic, it shows a guy basically being drawn to a giant vortex that just opened up, and he spends his time traveling to that after seeing vast amounts of hallucinations and stuff, and throws himself into the abyss. He just is compelled by it. Like, he cannot... And that's that's who you are in this game. They're basically... Are, they've already hinted at the fact that you are not the first person to throw yourself into this thing, and you will not be the last person. Here's a chest right upstairs. Useful item. It's, I always give the chest a good whack because... I know this is not a mimic, and I know where all the mimics are, but this game has things called mimics, which will be their, their enemies that look like chests. They'll appear exactly like a chest. And in Dark Souls 1, it was easy to tell what was and what wasn't by what the chain, what direction the chain on the side was going. In this game, there's no chain. So you gotta remember where they are. Otherwise, I recommend just giving it one whack. One whack. Not two, definitely not three. Three whacks will break the chest. And if you break the chest, you don't get what's inside of the chest, which can suck you at that point you only get rubbish which is just an item that's garbage human effigy yay that's a useful item see i hit it once already hit it again and then a third time is third time it breaks so don't hit it three times only hit it once you're safe hitting it one time if you hit it once and it is a mimic it'll stand up and you can attack it and do damage and kill it if you if, if you don't hit it and it's a mimic and you press a to open it it'll Basically, come close to one-shotting you by just eating you. A hell, most of the time, one-shot you, especially early in the game. But there's not that many mimic mimics early on. Human effigy, though. Yeah, petrified something. An unidentified object, pleasant to the touch, despite its looks. A rare and peculiar thing, to be certain, but one without a known purpose. So, the only purpose that I've found for this item is to trade to the crows. But... Who knows? I mean, I'd love to find some new stuff. This item, though, it's one of the most important items in the game. Right now, you can see I'm not hollow anymore. I am a human. I'm fully human. I'm sorry, I'm not hollowing. I am fully human. Because she gave me that human effigy that she said looked like me, despite the fact that it was basically a tumbleweed. And that restored my humanity. She gave me a free one, and I didn't get the chance to hold on to it. I just used it right then and there. But you can pick these things up, and it's a warm, soft, shadow-like effigy. Use this item to reverse hollowing. The hollowing. They don't say reverse your hollow. Reverse hollow. They say reverse hollowing, because it's a process. It also weakens the links to other worlds, preventing invasions and most, uh, and most cooperation. Peer closely at an effigy, and one begins to perceive a human form. But whose form it takes depends on the person looking. Anybody can use these, which is interesting. <clears throat> but use them, 
just by I can't use it right now because I am human. I'm already already restored by humanity. But if I was hollow, then I could use this item and it would restore it. Don't burn it in a bonfire. You can burn it in the bonfire. That's what it meant by... Um, it also weakens the links to other worlds, preventing invasions and most cooperation. If you burn this item in a bonfire, which is an option you get in the bonfires, uh, it will not... In my experience, it doesn't 100% prevent it. Like, especially for forced PvP areas, it won't prevent invasions. But it will help limit the invasions. Like, it'll help make you less of a target. You must go on a journey without rest. Well, I suppose if you find yourself at an arm pass. But if your will is yet unbroken, then you may return here to start again. Yeah, she's basically just referring slate. to an item in the game called a soul <laughs> vessel that you can bring back to her at any time and it allows you to respec all your stuff. Very interesting. Now, go along, go along. <laughs> yeah, and then she pretty much... Now, go along. Okay. Uh, it's very important to note in this game that when you talk to NPCs, you want to exhaust their dialogue. And by exhaust their dialogue, I mean just get them to the point where they're repeating the same thing or the same set of phrases or sentences. Because that helps progress their storyline, which could do a lot of things, you know, it'll help move them along in the game so you'll find them in a different location or their final location or it'll let you have the option to buy stuff from them or, I mean, everything will give you things because of the progress you've made or how much you've spent with uh, merchants. These just <laughs> laugh at you and then they don't say anything. That's what both of these do. <laughs> it's cool though they do have different laughs and she she's the crazy one these like out of out of crazy there's three crazies she's the one that's the craziest look at that face i swear i my first time playing through this game i got all the way to the end of the game and i went around to kill all the npcs because i figured in dark soul or when new game plus they'll all be you know they'll all come back and I killed her. I swear I killed her. But when I came back, everyone was dead and she was still sitting there. I, and I killed her again and she stayed dead. But I swear I killed her. Unless I'm just Mildred. remembering incorrectly. I swear. Oh, women haunts fire keepers. Trickster. I am here to look after them. So yeah, there's it is another. What my mother did, and her mother before her, and so on. Fire keepers are interesting. As far as the lore goes, uh, it's they were a big thing in Dark Souls One. Not so much in this game. They're basically retired. But we will get more dialogue about them from one of the guys in Majula and the old probably women were keepers of fire. the next video or two videos from now. But now, the fire shows signs of fading, and the kingdom is beset by hollows. Yeah, and that's another interesting thing. That's basically saying. It, it, it puts, a, like, the first, in Dark Souls 1, the flames were dying because when threw himself on the fire to preserve the flame, but it only lasts so long. And once it's done, the flames start to die again, and the world starts to become more hollowed, and, but... You, your character in Dark Souls 1, you have the option to throw yourself on the fire to, again, extend the era of light and fire, or you can turn out and walk out the door and become basically King of Darkness and embrace it. Uh, if you, I'm assuming that the process starts over multiple, multiple, multiple times and has for a long time. This is basically saying that this is the next era. It doesn't necessarily mean that the one after Dark, to dark, after dark Souls, but... I'd like to think that it is. I'd like to think it's the next time the fire is starting to die again. The old women are sisters. I am told there was a fourth. Long oh, ago, What's this? fire keepers were commonplace. But now they are lost. 
scattered to the winds. You brute! Whoa, I didn't mean to punch her. <laughs> I punched her right in the chest. Right in her breasts. Alright, guys. Uh, I'm going to come back. We'll do a little bit more of this dialogue. But I got to wrap this video up. See you in the next video.